What's up, party people? It's your boy Optimus Code. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so today we're going to discuss platforms, but not only platforms, we're also going to discuss technologists. And in the course of explaining this, you'll understand the rift that often exists between technologists and marketers. And you know there'll be a quiz at the end of the video. And if you stick around to the end, you'll be able to hopefully pass the quiz if you paid attention to all the stuff that happens while we try to teach the community about context and platforms. Any successful software organization will have at least two departments, right? There are often more, but they will have at least two. And it's not even just software, it's just products in general. You have to have a strong engineering department and you also have to have a strong marketing department. Why? Because in order to sell products to the public, you need to make sure that the product that you're trying to sell is appealing to that public. Engineers focus on making products that are good, that actually work, that actually perform. So for example, a flashlight. An engineer's job is to make sure that the flashlight performs, you get good battery life, you get good brightness, has good range, all of this type of stuff. And that engineer will consider their jobs complete when the product they make, in this example, the flashlight, does what it was intended to do and it does it to the best of the engineer's ability. However, the marketing team, their job is to figure out how to sell that flashlight to the public. And a lot of times the marketing team won't even care if the flashlight works as intended. The marketing team only cares that the product is appealing to the public. So often the marketing team will try to do things to make a product sound flashier or cooler than it actually is but that's what their job is. That's what they get paid to do. Any good product organization, hardware, software, or otherwise, you're gonna need both of those departments. Sometimes, and over the course of my career, the marketing team and the engineering team have been at odds with each other because the marketing team, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, usually puts out lies. Now, of course, every marketing team is not like that. There are plenty of good people on marketing teams. There are plenty of good, transparent marketing campaigns so on and so forth, so it's not universal. I'm just speaking from my position over the course of my career, the marketing teams that I have dealt with and what their underlying goal was. And us engineers had to learn to work with these marketing teams because it was important that the products that we make are sellable. What good would it do for us to put all this time and effort into making these products if nobody wants to buy them? So we have to work hand in hand with the marketing team. The problem is still though, sometimes the marketing team takes and uses engineering terms in a way that is beneficial to them as marketers and they often destroy or corrupt the actual definition of a term because they are not using it for its engineering value, they're using it for its ability to sound cool in the marketplace. And sometimes, they just make stuff up completely altogether that has no engineering value at all. So for example, the term blast processing, which was popular back in the 90s with the Sega Genesis. Some marketing department somewhere came up with this wonderful term called blast processing and they used it as a way to pit the Sega Genesis against the Super Nintendo and the whole point being that our product is better than their product because we have blast processing. Well, at the end of the day, there was no such thing as blast processing. It's just marketers doing what marketers do, which is make products sound cool. So there is often a rift between the engineers and the marketers because the role of an engineer is to provide clarity. Engineers want to remove confusion. Engineers want to be very specific about what you're going to get, what you're not going to get, what you can expect, what you can expect. They like to bring clarity to conversations. Marketers want to bring whatever advantages they have to sell the product that they are working for. And you really want a good marketing team on your side. The way I'm saying this is making it seem like the marketing team is negative and that they bad and they shysty. They're not. The marketing team is a necessary part of any organization. I personally prefer nice, honest marketing, nice, transparent marketing, but you don't always get that, right? So sometimes like they really can be shysty. 
They're not like that by definition or by default. Not every marketing team is on trash, but it is certainly the case, especially over my career, that there were plenty of conflicts between the marketing team and the engineering team because the marketing team is focusing on doing whatever is necessary to make a product look cool while the engineers are trying to get clarity and truth. And then the engineers actually don't want to be held accountable for these false marketing claims. And then when customers complain, then all of a sudden now the engineers are on the hook because the product didn't perform the way that it was advertised. Oh, and to be clear, the power of the marketing team is infinitely more potent than the power of the engineering team. And by that, I mean, if a product is inferior, but it has superior marketing, the superior marketing of the poorer product will win over the inferior marketing of a superior product. And one of the best examples of this is the whole Betamax versus VHS example, which y'all probably won't remember this is from back in the day, but VHS was an inferior technology to Betamax. Look it up, Google it. But VHS won, quote unquote won. Betamax did not win even though it was the superior technology. Why not? Marketing. The people behind VHS were able to market and position and sell it much better than the people behind Betamax, even though Betamax was a superior product. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really always matter what the superior engineering product is. What's most important in the marketplace is can the marketers sell this product? So do not underestimate the value of a good marketing team. All right, so why am I saying this? Like, what is the point? Well, the point is that right now there is some confusion around the term platform. And platform is a very, very specific term, especially in computer science and computer engineering. And because these marketing teams have done a really good job of using the word platform all over the place, there is a bit of confusion about what the actual meaning of platform is versus the marketing meaning of the term platform. And so I'm seeing these arguments break out because people are arguing, but they're arguing out of context. Oh, real quick, just a, a quick session in context. If you were listening in and you overheard someone talking and you heard them say, hit me and I'll hit you back, what would you think of that? Most people think that, okay, if someone hits you, it's only fair that you hit them back. Uh, Self-defense. You know, some people don't believe in violence at all and they think no matter what, you don't hit people back or whatever, and that's fine. But for the average person, if you overhear someone saying, you hit me, I'll hit you back, the general consensus is that that is a fair statement. But then you hear someone saying, if you don't hit me, then I'll hit you. Now in that conversation, most people think that, hey, that's not fair, because if the person didn't hit you, why would you hit them? Now you're being the aggressor. Well, if you find out that the person that you're listening to is actually talking to someone about a phone conversation and you understand that what they really meant is that if the person called them, they will call them back. Or if the person didn't call them first, then they would call the other person. Now your view of that same exact conversation, you have a very different approach than you did when you heard it the first time. Why? because now you understand the context of that conversation and how the words were being used. Whereas the first time you just assumed a particular context and you weren't really prepared to judge that conversation because you were not aware of the context. So context matters, context always matters. One of the things that's happening with this whole platform foolishness is people are running around and they are ignoring the context. So in computer engineering specifically, a, a platform has a very, very specific meaning. And in personal computing, a platform requires two things. It requires hardware and it requires a software operating system. The combination of those two things determine the platform. So for example, if you have a PC and you have a Windows operating system on it, that platform is Windows. If you have the hardware by itself without the software operating system, the platform is undefined because you need both pieces. If you have Windows itself as a software operating system, but it's just sitting in a box 
and it's not actually running, then the platform is still undefined because the software actually needs to be running on hardware. If you take that same hardware and you install a version of Linux, now what you have is a Linux platform. It's the exact same hardware, but now the software of the operating system is different. In personal computing, the hardware and the software combine to make the platform. Anything else is ridiculous because that's exactly what it means, but again, in the context of personal computers. So when someone says that gaming PCs are a Microsoft platform, that is 100% true because the overwhelming majority of gaming PCs, even though technically they can run on Linux, but it has to be through some sort of emulation, the overwhelming majority of gaming PCs are Microsoft devices because all of those games are built to run DirectX, they're built through DirectX, and they're targeted at the Windows platform. They may have native versions for uh, Mac OS, which is another platform. They may have native versions for Linux. Sometimes they do, but the overwhelming majority is on Windows. So the amount of gaming computers that are not Windows devices is negligible. And y'all should look that word up because a lot of people have a hard time understanding when something is negligible. But there are other meanings of platform as well, right? Because a word can have more than one meaning. Same thing with platform. So in the digital space, sometimes you have like digital distribution, right? Like Steam itself could be considered a platform because you are distributing games and content across multiple operating systems with this one digital distribution setup. So in that case, it's still a platform, but it's a platform in a different context. Now you're talking about digital distribution platform instead of a computing platform. As a computing platform, Steam is not a thing. Well, Steam OS is because they specifically made their own OS to run on hardware, right? So if you have hardware and Steam OS, then those two combine again, it's the hardware and the operating system. So if you have a Steam operating system on given hardware, then that machine is a Steam platform. But the Steam storefront or the digital distribution platform that is Steam is different than a computing platform. So even though the word platform is being used, you have to figure out which context. Like earlier when we said, if you hit me, I hit you back. You have to figure out what context is this word hit being used in. You need to figure out what is the context of the word platform because the word has more than one meaning. And it is an equivocation when you use a word that has more than one meaning and you use more than one sense of that word in the same sentence or the same conversation without clarifying that you're switching contexts. And this is where a lot of the confusion is coming from because some people are talking about platforms as a computing platform. Other people are talking about platforms as a digital distribution platform. And those two people are not going to have the same conversation because they are using a different context for the same word. So if you go engage in these type of conversations, make sure that you're using the correct context for the word that you're using. And before you challenge someone trying to tell them that a statement that they made is wrong, make sure that you understand the context that they are using before you jump in making yourself look like a fool. A platform in computing is a combination of the hardware and an operating system. Regardless of the marketing terms and the way the marketing people try to use the term platform, the actual engineering meaning of the term platform is hardware and software together create the platform. Same thing with Google and Android OS, same thing with Apple and iOS and Mac OS, same thing with Windows and Windows 10, same thing with Linux and all the various distributions. The hardware and the software together determine the platform and personal computing, which again is very different than digital distribution because then that is also a platform, but it's a distribution platform. Uh, I think, you know, Xbox is trying to get there with Game Pass. So to be clear, when you're having these conversations, make sure that both parties are using the same context and then that'll get rid of all these little senseless arguments as a technologist your job your desire is to add clarity not confusion okay that's it time for the quiz
Okay, time's up. Quiz over, pencils down. How did y'all do? Hopefully this one was real easy and you understand why it's important to always keep things in context. And as a technologist, it's going to be your responsibility to speak clearly and add clarity to conversations, not add confusion to conversations. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. We appreciate it. If you like the content at the channel so far, go ahead and subscribe. We appreciate it. If you know other people that will benefit from what's being taught here, then go ahead and share the channel information and all that stuff with them so that they too can get an opportunity to learn and benefit from the things that hopefully you are learning and benefiting from as well. We appreciate the support so far and we'll see y'all next time. Peace.